Now let's have a closer look at the replicated databases. We will see where they're located, what their relevance is, and also we will create a problem with the IDBs of one node, uh, so that the IDBs of that node will go down. And we will repair that situation for one RDB and for all RDBs. Now the purpose of RDBs is, in fact, they are replacing configuration files. Uh, the RDBs are managed by the cluster software and they contain cluster configuration information. We could say that instead of using configuration files, ONTAP uses databases to store all the information. So for example, instead of having an Etsy exports file, uh, like in Sever mode or on most other Unix and Linux systems, ONTAP stores that information that would be found in the Etsy export file in an export policy. And this policy is, like other policies, part of a replicated database. The five RDBs are VLDB for volumes and aggregates, Fifth Manager for networking, BCOM for SAN config, uh, CRS for SVM configuration, in, for example, a metro cluster, and management for the rest. Management is also responsible for communication with the other daemons to ensure the updates that come from daemons of other nodes to the respective daemons on the local node. So that management gateway is very, very important. This means that the management gateway daemon is vital to the RDB ring, as it's called. Uh, this management daemon, by the way, runs twice on every node. Both management gateway daemons function as a watchdog for one another. Uh, if one would fail, it would be restarted by the other. So it's very important that this management gateway daemon is running at all times. These RDB daemons are running cluster-wide. That means every node will run its own RDB daemons. This means that each RDB ring is managed by one node in the cluster and one node only. Very often one node is responsible as a master for all five of the RDB rings. But this is not necessarily the case. Sometimes one node manages some RDB rings and another node manages other RDB rings. You cannot really influence that. So in this picture we see that we have three ring masters on node 1 and two ring masters on node 2. If you're not the master then you're the secondary. So in a four node cluster you would always have one master and three secondaries. The command to view the masters and secondaries is clustering show from the advanced level. The uh, master nodes are responsible for updating all the other nodes in the cluster. These updates are transaction based, so if something goes wrong, then the entire transaction will be cancelled by the master node. The number of updates and the number of transactions are also shown with this command. The files of the RDBs are located in vol0 in the directory slash mroot at c cluster config rdb and each rdb has its own subdirectory with the name of the rdb itself so we've got a subdirectory vldb fiv manager crs management and become you should never edit any of these files directly so you can have a look at them but you shouldn't touch them now what can go wrong a daemon can stop running in itself that is not necessarily problematic if you want to create a volume on a node of which the VLDB daemon is not running, then that volume cannot be created. That's it. You'll get an error message. The RDB ring, however, will not be offline. You could create that volume on another node. But of course, it's not an ideal situation. You want to have this daemon up and running again because you want to create a volume on that particular node. So you should make sure that the daemon gets started again. However, it's very unlikely that a daemon will stop running because daemons are monitored by a service which is called the Service Process Monitoring Daemon, or in other words, SPMD. This service monitor uh, will monitor the VLDB daemons and all the other daemons and it will restart them if they fail. You can also manually stop daemons by using the SPMCTL command. And obviously you can also start them again with the same command, but now with the exec argument. Finally, there is something which is called majority vote. Um, majority vote means that in generic clustering, a service will only function properly if it can get more than half of all possible votes. 
So if, for example, you've got four nodes and four votes are possible, meaning four services can maximally be present, then you will need at least three votes, which is more than half. In this scenario, what we see here, we have all four RDBs present in the same ring and everything is fine. Then we lose one VLDB on one node and we still have more than half. But then we lose a second service, uh, so we're stuck with only half, exactly half of all possible votes, and that's bad. So the VLDB ring will then go offline. So you will not be able to create a volume on any of the nodes anymore. That doesn't mean necessarily that if two nodes go down, that the ring will necessarily go offline. We'll see that in the module on Epsilon. Now let's go and have a demo. We'll stop one daemon on one node and see what that will bring us. Then we will stop two daemons, so in two different nodes, and that means that the remaining node will lose majority vote. So it will go offline. Because we've got a three node cluster, if you lose one node, you still have two votes. In the same three node cluster, if you lose two nodes, you will drop below half. So that means you will go offline. Then we will stop all daemons on one node and repair the failed node. In this demo, we will use a three node cluster. Now in real life, you will never run a three node cluster, uh, but for demonstration purposes, that's perfectly fine. So we open three terminals. One will be the cluster shell, the second one will be a system shell on node two, and the third one will be a system shell on node three. So let's do it. Now let's first check whether our cluster is healthy. So we run cluster show, and it tells us that we've got three healthy nodes and everything's fine. And we're logged in as Diag on node two and on node three in the system shell. Then we run clustering show for the VLDB unit. And we see that we've got one master and two secondaries. Node one is the master. Then we will create a volume in any of the nodes. So we create a volume called uh, data vol. 20 and the size is 100 megabytes aggregate is node 2 aggregate 1 it should be able to create a volume on any node so we're done next thing we do is we go to the system shell of node 3 and we will bring down in, uh, in an orderly manner we'll bring down the VLDB daemon so we run spmctl and stop VLDB. Once that's done, we check the cluster ring again. And it tells us that the VLDB of node 3 is no longer accessible because it's gone. Then we will create a volume on node 3 in Aga 1 and call it data vault 21. And it immediately tells us that this data volume cannot be created because the aggregate is not available, which is obvious. I mean, the aggregate's there, but the VLDB is not there. And we see we've only got two nodes, master and secondary, and we have a problem. Now we will create the volume on node 2. That should work, and it does. So one VLDB is down doesn't mean that the rest is down. But now we will stop the VLDB on the second node. Let's first check whether it's running. And as you can see, VLDB is running. So now we will stop it. Same story, we run the stop argument with SPMCTL. Now we look at the clustering again, and it says we've got a master, but we've got no secondaries anymore. And it'll only take a second, and you see that the master is offline. And it will remain offline. So we will not be able to create any volumes anymore in this three node cluster. So what we do is we will start the VLDB on node two. So we run the spmctl exec command and we check the VLDB and now it tells us that they're both offline but that'll only be a second and then node one is the master again and node two is the secondary. We uh, enable node three VLDB as well and we'll see that in a second. That will be a secondary. Now let's first do something um, 
to node 1. So we log into the system shell of node 1 and we will stop the VLDB on node 1 and see what happens. VLDB is stopped. We leave the system shell and we check the VLDB and now we see we've got two secondaries but that's not, not okay because we killed the master and that's a problem. So they will be offline, they will think a little bit and then node 2 will be chosen as the master and node 3 will be the secondary. And these two nodes are fine. So we log into node 1 again to the system shell and we will run the exec command so we will start it again and we check and now we see that we've got a new master and we've got two secondaries so we're basically back to normal and we're done now in the next demo we will stop all the demons on one of the nodes we're going to pick node 3 and we will run a script which is present in the system shell and it's called etsy netapp stop rdb apps and it will stop all of the demons that have to do with the rdb rings so that node will no longer be functional in any of the rdb rings then in order to be able to fix this we will go to the cluster shell and recover that broken node by running the configuration recovery cluster sync command and we specify that we want to synchronize node 3 with the healthy rings uh, on node 1 and node 2. And to make it even worse before we do that uh, I'm actually going to remove all of the RDB files that we should never touch remember so I'm going to uh, physically remove all of these files and we want to check whether they're actually being restored from the healthy part of the cluster. So let's have a look at it. So now we split our screen into two and one is logged into the cluster shell and the other is logged into the system shell of node 3. And we are user ID 0 and now let's have a look at the RDBs. And what we see is that we've got a very healthy environment because node 3 is up and running, node 2 is up and running, we've got some masters, we've got some secondaries, and now we go to the Etsy directory and there's a script which is called netapp stop rdb apps and what we're going to do is we're going to run that script and that will stop all of the rdb demons on the local node so node 3 is going to be out of the cluster ring in a second it's not going to take very long it simply stops all the demons in a fashionable way now when we look at cluster ring show again, it says that the only thing that's running is the, the management gateway daemon on that node. And this is because it has two daemons running and they will be restarting each other as we discussed. Now we go to slash mroot cluster config rdb which is a directory that holds all the five rdbs. And when we list that what we see is we've got five subdirectories ecom, crs, management, viv manager and vldb. Now when we look in vldb which is a directory we see a lot of files. These are the files that you should never touch. So there's in this case 83 files that hold all the configuration for volumes, aggregates and things like that. Same story for viv manager. So our viv manager directory also holds a lot of files and so do the others. Now let's be blunt and remove the vldb directory in total. So we simply remove not only the files but also the directory itself. And we do the same for the viv manager. So we have really destroyed this vldb environment. And when we look with spmctl and we can specify the option dash L and grab VLDB, trust me, it's not there because everything is gone. Now, I'm going to watch whether something's happening to the VLDB directory. And what you see now is every five seconds or so, I'm going to check and it says there's no directory. Right? So I go back to the cluster shell 
Now I'm going to recover that node, or at least try to. So I run configuration, recovery, cluster, sync, and I'm going to synchronize node 3. Now we get a very important message. This message says that you should not touch anything. So the command will synchronize and it will recover from a disaster. Do not perform any recovery operations while this operation is in progress. So we don't touch anything, but we do say yes. So now it will start. It will contact the environment at the other side and restart all the demons. And what you see here is that it's already begun. So there are some unit DB, there is some unit config and a unit backup. And they're all back. So when we look with SPMCTL, we see that the volume manager daemon is back. So the volume location database is back. And we can have a look at the Viv manager as well. So let's check whether the files in Viv manager are back. They're back. And so we're very happy. So probably our node is back into the ring environment. Let's check that. So we run cluster ring show and everything is fine again. So we recovered the RDB environment and we're done. Hope to see you back in the next module.